All right, class. This is uh, Mr. Briggs' class. And um, what we're learning today is we are learning how to build a zombie apocalypse radio. So basically, this is a really simple uh, radio project. Um, all you need is some wire and some uh, basic electronic components, and you can make yourself a radio that requires no batteries uh, to work at all. Um, and the reason it doesn't require any batteries has to do with alternating and direct current, which we should have gone over before. But this is the how to build a radio. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, begin. First, let's go over some history. Uh, the first crystal radio sets were really primitive. Um, they utilized coils of wire, um, maybe some headphones, some really basic speakers, and some really primitive uh, receivers, or what we would call today diodes. And they were made out of crystals, uh, actual crystals mined from the ground. Today we use um, special semiconductor uh, com uh, components. Um, the one we're going to be using is a germanium diode but they would connect them up and they would put on these headsets and they would be able to listen to the radio and this was one of the first radio sets that was very simple to make um, it was very inexpensive uh, to make it didn't require your house to actually have electricity uh, to use it since it doesn't require electricity to work so for a lot of people in the 1920s this was the very first radio set they owned um, they became a little less popular as time went on because we were able to use better radios that used amplification and speakers and those are the typically the really big complicated radio sets you think of when you think of the golden age of radio but for a lot of people the very first radios they would have used were these crystal radios now they also have some interesting history um, in that they uh, had them show back up during world war ii um, during World War II, um, soldiers in Europe would want to listen to the radio, but there weren't a lot of radios. So they would build their crystal radio sets by winding wire, whatever wire they had around, um, a, to make the coil. And they would use uh, actually a rusted razor blade um, as the diode. And you can uh, go and do a Google search for foxhole radio, and it will tell you how to build a foxhole radio using a razor blade diode. It was also a really interesting radio because during World War II, if you were in a country taken over by the Nazis, um, radios were illegal. You couldn't have radios. Um, it was the Nazis didn't want you getting information uh, from the Allies, from America or from England. So actually, um, people in Europe um, would build their own crystal radio sets so that they could listen to the BBC radio and um, learn some stuff. And owning a crystal radio, owning a radio of your own, could get you put to death. So we're going to build a really basic one um, today. First, let's gather up our supplies. You're going to need the following stuff. You're going to need a... 50 foot, 40 to 50 feet of insulated copper wire. Um, this is magnet wire is what it's commonly called. It needs to be a pretty thick gauge if you want it to be useful. Uh, you're going to need a plastic or paper tube of about 7 to 10 inches long. Uh, I used a paper tube. That worked out just fine. I also used a piece of PVC pipe. Um, that was really useful because it's a lot stronger. You're going to need a germanium diode. These are pretty inexpensive. They cost about a dollar a piece. Um, I would order them on Amazon. Don't try to get them at Radio Shack. Uh, you'll need a crystal earpiece, um, which is also kind of a Google search. They can be pretty expensive. So one of the other things you can do is find yourself an old landline phone handset and strip the red and green wires and you can use that instead of a crystal earpiece. It actually works, in my opinion, better than a crystal earpiece. And it's a lot more useful. The crystal earpieces, you have to stick them in your ear. And especially for a classroom, that can be kind of gross. Then you're going to need 40 to 100 feet of insulated wire for an antenna and for a ground. Um, so you need to have an antenna wire. Uh, you can just string one out the window, uh, run one up a flagpole, 
um, put one up on the clothesline, but you need to have a big long hunk of uh, antenna wire. I just got myself a big spool of speaker wire. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It does, though, have to be insulated so it doesn't uh, have any connections to other things and short out. I would also make sure you have three, thumb, three or four thumbtacks uh, to tack down your parts to, to a piece of board. Uh, you want a round pencil and you want a piece of wood um, or a piece of uh, cardboard for a backing uh, so you can attach everything to something. Um, also, I forgot to mention, you might want some sandpaper um, a little later on so that you can sand off parts of the wire. Let's go ahead and get working. The first thing you need to do is grab your wire, your diode, and your thumbtacks. We need to, step one, wind up our coil. You're going to start by tying one end of the wire to one side of your tube. Be super, super, super careful. So the trick with this is, again, to be super careful while you are winding the wire. Um, when you take the wire off, I have the wire kind of wrapped around something. Be super careful when you're unwrapping it. You do not want this wire to come undone. You don't want to come off like a big old slinky. I recommend you get a water bottle or a piece of cardboard or a book and wrap the wire around that so your wire does not get tangled up into a big giant slinky mess. Be super careful. Then you want to tie the wire off onto one part of your tube. I, I drilled a hole into my tube and just wound it through and tied a knot. Um, don't tie it too tight, just enough to keep the wire from unwinding. And then you wrap the wire around the tube five times. Make sure you keep it really tight. And hold it down after five turns. And then you take a pencil. And you put your round, a round pencil works best. Uh, because it'll slide in and out really easily. Uh, hold down a round pencil and basically just wrap a loop uh, under and then over your pencil. So you make this like little loop. And then wrap it another five times. And you just complete, com continue this process doing five turns and then a loop. Five turns and then a loop. If you are unsure whether you're doing this correctly, wait a little bit for the next slide, uh, or ask Mr. Briggs, ask me if you're on the right track. It is vital, vital, super important that you get the coil made correctly. Otherwise, you are not going to have a good time with this radio. And this is what your completed coil should look like. Here's the pencil slid through there, and we have a coil wire. It's not overlapping anywhere. Um, or if it is overlapping, it's overlapping very little. And we are wrapping it five times, making a loop. Wrapping it five times, making a loop. And you basically do that until you run out of tube. Um, generally, that ends up being about 120, 150 turns. And the reason we do that is that the electrons are going to be moving in and out of this tube. And depending on where we clip our antenna onto these loops we can get different stations. So this loop right here might be getting us um, National Public Radio. This one might be getting us a Mexican radio station. This one over here might get us sports. This is basically our tuner. It's letting us adjust our radio to different frequencies. More on that though later. So now once your coil is done, you need to strip parts of the coil. Now there's a little bit of paint that they put on this uh, wire. And they put the paint on the wire so that it's insulated, so that it's protected. You don't burn your fingers if you run electricity through it. Um, you also won't have the wire crossing um, if you tried to connect it up to stuff. You won't have the current crossing into uh, other parts of the wire. What you need to do is just take some sandpaper and run it over the top of that pencil very lightly. Uh, just light enough so you can see that bare copper wire, the, the bare coppery metal. Um, if you do it any heavier, you risk damaging the wire, you risk uh, cutting the wire, and if you cut your coil, there really isn't a very easy way to reattach it. Um, you're kind of out of luck, you'll have to make another coil. Um, then you take the wire and you strip the ends of the wire, the ends that are going to attach to the rest of the radio. 
um, so that electricity can move through those as well. Okay. Then you should have something that looks like this. Here we have the stripped copper wire. You can kind of see the difference in color. And you have the stripped copper wire at either end, right? And here is our finished coil. Isn't it beautiful? Let's go to the next step. All right. Now we have our we have to attach the diode. Now the diode is really um, the heart of this radio. The diode acts as a one-way valve. It lets the electricity, uh, the electrons, move into the. Um, it lets electrons move one way, but not back out the other, and this will cause there to be an imbalance of electrons in your speaker and your alternating current turns into direct current and when you have that imbalance when you have that direct current now where the electrons are only moving in one direction you are able to run your speaker so really without the diode the coil everything else won't work um, but they need to work together so the trick with this is to thumb is to wrap put down a thumbtack Wrap your coil wire around it a couple of times, then very carefully loop your diode around that thumbtack, maybe wrap the coil wire around one more time, and then push the thumbtack down. Now it's really, really important, and I don't know how easy it is to see this, but it's really important that you attach the, there's a little black stripe on the diode, and that tells you which way we're letting the electrons flow. Um, we want to make sure that that black line is pointed away from the coil. So here's your coil. You have the empty spot. Your black line needs to be pointed away. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay? You will be out of luck. Then, thumbtack the other side of the coil down. This is going to be going to the ground. Okay? I drew these um, onto the board. It might be useful for you to draw them onto the board as well with a Sharpie or something. Okay. Next. Next step is going to be a little tricky to see. Uh, because I copied a couple of things. Um, what we need to do now is we need to attach the headphones. Now, you can use um, the headphones, um, like I said, a crystal earpiece. I, again, used a handset from a landline telephone, and I attached alligator clips, and so here's one of them, and I've attached it to the ground side of the coil, the open end, and then I attached another one to the diode end, and I just clipped it onto, the, again, the black end of the diode. Um, that means that the electrons can flow freely uh, through this side, but they can only flow in one direction on this side. Um, and when it can only flow in one direction, once again, it creates an imbalance, and that imbalance is what gives us the radio signal. So connect up your headphones very carefully, and then find, a, find where Mr. Briggs has put the antenna and the ground uh, for the classroom. And then we want to connect the ground up, and the ground is right here. It clips onto this end, um, this location right here. And then the other end we want to connect up to the coil. And like I said, depending on where we put it in the coil, you should get different radio stations. Now, if you're not getting a radio station, it could mean a couple of things. It could mean that the antenna is disconnected, it could mean your ground is disconnected, and it could mean that the connection here isn't proper. Also, double, maybe even triple check that your diode is pointed in the right direction. Um, and you should be hearing some radio stations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been Building a Crystal Radio with Mr. Briggs. Hope we have fun.